Good afternoon. Before we introduce ourselves, did you know that 71% of the Earth is water and 60% of the human body is also made up of water? With water being part of us and all around us, it's no wonder that so many people have a special connection with the sea. The sea soothes, calms and inspires us. My name is Abby Roberts. And my name is Bella Edwards. I love the beach. Some of my happiest times are on the beach walking my dog, hearing the waves crash and the seagulls screech from high above. I spent many happy hours snorkelling, exploring the incredible world under the waves, watching the beautiful sea creatures in their natural habitats. Like Abby, I was walking my dog on the beach when, um, which she loves, my dog loves it there because well, she loves the water, she loves the sea creatures and the way they react to her and um, just everything about it and so do I and I'm sure Abby does as well. Um, but it was a rainy day and of course if you have a dog you'll know you can't stay at home if it's pouring with rain with the dog and it's sometimes annoying but of course it doesn't matter. Um, and I noticed something was wrong. Uh, I had gone over to some rock pools and I'd seen this crab. It didn't have most of its shell and I found out later that it had dissolved due to ocean acidification. Of course, this was shocking and I was horrified to see what we've been doing to the oceans to make these animals lose basically their homes because of things we have created. Ocean acidification makes shellfish lose their shells, causing them to become weak. It makes coral more vulnerable to coral bleaching. But the two most important effects of ocean acidification are that it kills phytoplankton and they absorb the CO2, so killing them makes global warming worse. The phytoplankton are at the bottom of the food chain, so if they are gone, it will affect animals higher up. Everything from the smallest of fish to us humans. Everyone talks about plastics in the ocean, but no one mentions ocean, ocean acidification, which has been described as climate change's equally evil twin. Other animals that are affected by ocean acidification are clams, oysters, mussels, um, scallops, starfish, and sea butterflies, which are also known as pteropods. <laughs> sea butterflies are known to eat plankton, so again, our plankton are well needed. Although sea butterflies do not have an active role in creating or stopping ocean acidification, their home is still Earth, just like it is ours. The more acidic seawater becomes, the less calcium carbonate it can hold. Many marine species, including coral, need calcium carbonate to build their protective shells and exoskeletons. Without shells, it grows slowly and becomes and become weak. Going back to calcium carbonate, there are minerals that are building blocks to skeletons and shells for many marine creatures and organisms. Although coral reefs are known to clean the ocean, they are constantly being acidicated by the carbon dioxide going into the ocean. Coral reefs are home to many creatures and protect wildlife. Now I want to talk to you about ecosystems. Much like forests on land, um, corals create their hard stony shells over years and years, creating complex environments for sea creatures to live. Um, did you know that ocean acidification is often called uh, oh, oh, sorry, I'm really nervous. Is often known as the osteoporosis of the sea. Small things we can do to help stop ocean acidification is to save water. For example, don't leave the tap on when you finish brushing your teeth. Reduce plastic. Buy more products that don't contain plastic or at least not as much. Recycle. If you finish with an item and want to bin it, don't because it could be used for something more useful. Buy locally. If you start buying from more local shops, there won't be need for deliveries. And deliveries can create lots of, no, deliveries can create huge amount of carbon. So, for example, you could walk or cycle to your local shops. For more help with the topic ocean acidification, you could research NOAA.gov. Humans are curious by nature, but also protective too. So why aren't we protecting our planet Earth? It's not like there's another planet lined up ready. It's not like we can just do anything we want to this one and move on to the next as if nothing ever happened. Another thing we could have mentioned to help is eat less meat, but we don't want to be hypocrites. In conclusion, this affects everyone, not just aquatic life like phytoplankton. Thank, Thank you. you.